Number 45, a balloon with a volume of 100.21 liters at 21 degrees Celsius and 0.981 atm is released and just barely clears the top of Mount Crumpet in British Columbia. If the final volume of the balloon is 144.53 liters at a temperature of 5.24 degrees Celsius, what is the pressure experienced by the balloon as it clears Mount Crumpet? Now, I believe that, I just want to clear something up, that I believe Mount Crumpet is spelt with an I-T and not an E-T in British Columbia. So... We, we, can't, we can't be having Mount Crumpet being spelled wrong, right? So that's number one. Now let's answer the question. Okay, so we have a certain balloon. It's going over Mount Crumpet, right? And I love that name, by the way. I think it's so such a cool name for a mountain. It has a volume at a temperature and at a pressure. So let's just write that down. So we have a volume, right? They told us that it's 100 0.21 liters with the corresponding temperature of 21 degrees Celsius and a pressure at 0 0.981 atm. Now it's just clearing the top of Mount Crumpet and they're now saying that the volume has changed. The final volume of the balloon is now 144.53 liters. So I now have a new volume. So I'm just going to write that down as another V, 144.53 liters. And this volume is occurring at a new temperature. So I have a new temp, 5.24 degrees Celsius. And they're asking for that pressure. So this P, question mark. So what is that pressure? once it clears Mount Crumpet. Okay, so in this case now we have to just figure out what formula we're using, but I do see that I have sets here, right? I have two volumes, I have two temperatures, and I have two pressures. So usually when you see sets, you're thinking of the combined gas law, which is this one. So P1 V1 over T1 N1 equals P2 V2 over T2 N2. The beautiful thing about this formula is get rid of any of the variables that are not stated or that do not change. I didn't see anything that had to do with moles, which is n, so I'm just going to get rid of that. So n goes bye-bye. And now we have the other three variables. I have changing volumes, I got changing temps, and I'm searching for that second pressure. Now it doesn't matter which side is 1 versus 2, right, in our 1 versus 2 side. It just matters that you matched up the volume with the correct temperature and the pressure. So I'm just gonna say, okay, since this is the left side, these are all V1, T1, P1, and this is V2, T2, P2. So now let's just plug it all in. But before we do that, there's only one rule for the combined gas law, and that temperature, capital T, has to be in Kelvin. The other units, pressure and volume, they could be in any unit for pressure and volume, just as long as they are the same on both sides. But the temperature has to be in Kelvin. So, uh-oh, they gave us both Celsius. So for both of these numbers, I have to convert to some Kelvin number on both sides. We know how to convert to Kelvin. All we have to do is just plus 273. You can plus 273... Uh, 0.15 to make it more specific, but I think this will do just fine. So 21 plus 273, I get 294 for the first temp, and that's in Kelvin, and then 5.24 plus 273, I get 278.24, and I'm just going to get rid of this. There we go. 278 and I'm probably going to need a more room here. So I'm going to say 278.24, and that's now Kelvin. The corresponding liters, the volume is the same unit, so we're good with that. And if you noticed, if this pressure is in ATM, what is this pressure going to be in when we get it? Yeah, it's going to be ATM. So let's just plug it in. 
So let's see, I'm going to do it down here. So I got P1, which is 0 0.981, times V1, which is 100.21, all divided by T1, which, oh boy, oh boy, <laughs> hold on, oh my god, hey, okay, there we go. So this is all going to be divided by 294, and this equals... Uh, P2, which is what we're solving for, times V2, which is 144.53, and that's all over now the new temp in Kelvin, 278.24. Okay, cool. And now, um, let's cross multiply it out, right? It looks like this is going to be times with this. And then this part is going to be multiplied with this. Wonderful. When we do this part, try not to uh, round as much because remember, we only round the final answer. So 0 0.981 times 100.21 times 278.24. I'm going to try to extend it as much as I can on, line, on, you know, on the screen. So 27352. 0.664422 equals 144.53 times 294. I get 42491.82, and that's now x. If we want to solve for x, you know what we got to do. Got to just divide by that number on both sides. So 42491.82. 424 point, oh no, 42491.82. Four and then this will cancel. We get x equals, which I guess I'll put over here. And then we got our final answer. So this divided by this. And now I'm looking back. I see that I have like three sig figs. So I'm going to leave this with three sig figs. But, you know, who cares? <laughs> so I get 0 0.644. Here we go, 0.644, and that's ATM. And they didn't want us to convert to any other pressure units, so we are done. What do you think, guys? That was pretty fun. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you so much for tuning into the video. If you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button and tell your friends, tell your classmates that this YouTube channel exists. I think it's pretty cool. What do you think? All right, learning is fun, and chem is not that hard. You got this, all right? Good luck on your future tests and quizzes, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.